Since 2007, China and the United States have proven they're capable of destroying satellites in low Earth orbit with missiles. They've each taken out one of their own satellites. It's no easy feat since the satellites are streaking across the sky a few hundred miles above Earth at about 17,000 miles an hour. Without fast computers, people wouldn't stand a chance. Hitting a satellite in space with a missile is as difficult as hitting someone else's tennis serve with yours. Getting the timing, getting the speed right, it's virtually impossible. But for a modern missile with advanced technology, it's not that difficult. These missiles have sensors that allow them to determine their own location and the target location and changes and make split-second adjustments and hit them. Imagine if you had a smart tennis ball using the same kind of sensor technology, adjusting its location hundreds of times a second to make sure it hit the target. And once a missile intercepts a satellite, a big explosion isn't needed. In fact, many anti-satellite missiles are designed to simply ram their target without any explosives at all. Space-based materials are designed to be fairly light. It's very expensive to lift things into orbit. It takes about 100 pounds of fuel to lift one pound into orbit. So you want to make things as light as possible, which makes them also usually comparatively easy to knock out. And back on Earth, the effects of an all-out space war in the next decade would be severe. If countries begin blasting each other's satellites out of the sky, the problems would quickly spread beyond making it difficult for the military to wage war. Today's global society is definitely dependent on space. If we were to start losing satellites, not just military satellites, but commercial and civil satellites, what would happen to daily life? Suddenly, ATM machines don't work. Many cell phones don't work. Pay at the pump no longer works. Financial transactions all over the world that use the GPS timing signal all of a sudden are disrupted. So the whole world slows down. And if a space war escalated totally out of control, missiles might carry nuclear warheads into space to make sure important targets were knocked out with a big blast. But you won't believe how different a nuclear blast in space looks and how destructive it can still be back on Earth. There's one weapon in today's arsenals that might still be used to annihilate targets in massive space battles of the future. Atomic bombs. But anyone used to seeing atomic explosions on Earth would have a hard time recognizing these blasts in space. One of the creepy things about exploding a nuclear weapon in space is it doesn't look like anything you'd expect. Here on the planet Earth, we see this iconic mushroom cloud. But in space, with no atmosphere, there's no cloud. Instead, you have an expanding bubble of radiation, a single flash of light, like a star, very small, going supernova. In the first few nanoseconds, High-energy gamma rays explode in all directions, along with a flash of light, followed by an expanding cloud of radiation. The shockwave that rips buildings apart on Earth is gone, since there's no atmosphere in space. But the sphere of radiation expands faster and farther than on Earth. You can just think of almost like bullets, but they're radiation particles going out and they will travel a long ways. Gamma rays, neutrons, they will penetrate satellites, some go blasting right through, others hit electronics and cause a lot of damage. With an average size nuclear bomb, any satellites within a 50 mile radius will be destroyed. But an atomic blast in space wouldn't just destroy equipment. 
Astronauts flying through the debris from an exploded nuclear weapon in space would be subject to extreme levels of radiation. In particular, there are gamma rays coming from radioactive decay of radioactive nuclei, and they can interact with skin and cause, cause cancer. Also, there are energetic electrons and other particles coming from these radioactive nuclei, and all of these things are damaging to living tissue. Without any wind or other atmospheric effects, that expanding sphere of radiation would stay at dangerous levels for months. Today's missiles can carry nuclear warheads into space, and due to the way atomic bombs interact with Earth's upper atmosphere, one country might decide to target another with a blast in space because it actually causes a lot of damage all the way down on Earth. When a nuclear weapon goes off above most of the Earth's atmosphere, it releases a bunch of gamma rays, very high energy electromagnetic radiation, that ionize the gas in the atmosphere. That is, they kick the electrons off of the atoms and molecules. Those electrons are kicked largely in a downward direction, and they're moving at a substantial fraction of the speed of light. Now that creates an incredible electric current, and that can set up big voltage differences and big surges of current in electrical equipment here on Earth. So if America were the target, there'd be a sudden spike of current known as an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, coming down like a massive invisible ball of lightning. It destroys electronics and anything else carrying an electric current in an instant. Atomic blasts on Earth also create EMPs, but with more limited ranges. By exploding above the atmosphere, a single atomic blast could devastate the country. It's been estimated that if you lit off a one megaton nuclear weapon 100 kilometers over Kansas, you would render most, if not all, the electronics in the United States inoperative. The damage on Earth from atomic explosions in space isn't just theory. Starting in the late 1950s, during the height of the Cold War, both the United States and the former Soviet Union became the only nations to use space as a nuclear testing ground. One of the last tests, in 1962 above the Pacific Ocean, created an EMP that knocked out electronics all the way from New Zealand to Hawaii. So you can affect a large area with these currents, these sharp currents, not just the immediate area right below the bomb. Because of the widespread damage in space and on Earth, both countries stopped these blasts after less than two dozen tests. To avoid hitting friendly satellites or spacecraft with big, imprecise nuclear blasts, conventional firearms could be used in space. But if you were in charge of security outside of a space station, would a normal handgun even fire without atmospheric oxygen in a microgravity environment? Gunpowder has its own oxidizer built into it, so it, it would fire. Uh, if you managed to get the firing pin to, to hit the end of the bullet, it would go off. Now, would it eject the slide and the next bullet go into the round, and would that work? That's a good question. I'm not real positive uh, that it would fire more than a few times before it seized up and quit working. A big part of the problem is that the metal moving parts inside guns need lubricants to work smoothly. But the harsh extremes of space would probably cause the lubricants to fail. If a handgun got in the sunlight, for example, it would get really, really hot, and the parts would seize together, probably. If it were not in the sunlight, it would get really, really cold, and the parts would seize together, probably. And lubricants just have a hard time of working in the vacuum of space. The biggest problem is they bead up. They turn into little balls because there's no uh, gravity or, or any other uh, atmosphere that it can adhere to. 